Here's everything we know about day two of Prince Harry's trial against Mirror Group newspapers. First of all, he actually turned up today. If you remember, on the first day, the judge was a little bit surprised that Prince Harry hadn't turned up because he was in Los Angeles and then flew in late on Sunday night. Well, he arrived in court around an hour before proceedings were due to begin. He was greeted by his celebrity barrister, David Sherborne, at the door and then whisked inside without taking any questions from the press. Then at pretty much bang on 10.30 in the morning, for the first time in more than 130 years, a British royal took to the witness stand. First we heard from his barrister asking how Prince Harry should be addressed. He said, on first instance, should it be your Royal Highness and thereafter Prince Harry, to which the Duke replied, Yes, and then it was straight into the cross-examination. And it's clear now that there are two different ways that both sides are trying to take their cases forward. For Prince Harry, it is about trying to give broad answers which attack the press. For the opposing side, for the Mirror and its journalists, it's about trying to pin Harry to give them exact details of how information was illegally obtained to poke holes in his story and try to find inaccuracies. And one of the ways that they've done that is by using Prince Harry's witness statement, this 90 plus page document which was supplied to the court in which he puts forward all of his allegations. They started off with one story from 1996, which was published by the Mirror under the headline, Diana So Sad. Now in that story, it relates to Princess Diana going to visit her son's school and Prince Harry alleges that there's no other way that the Mirror could have got information from that story apart from by getting the information illegally. The Mirror says, well actually, first of all, the story had been printed in the news agency, the Press Association, a few days ahead of that visit, so people knew. Other newspapers had reported that detail too. They also said, though, that Prince Harry in his witness statement had come forward to say that in 1998 that was the first time he'd been given a mobile phone. Well this story was written in 1996, two years before that phone, so how on earth could his phone have been hacked? Prince Harry was also quizzed about a story where he was planning for his 18th birthday party, a story titled No Eaten Trifles for Harry. Yet again, Prince Harry had spoken to the Press Association in advance of that. So other newspapers had this information. But this is where things got a little bit heated in court. Prince Harry believes that invoices which were issued to private investigators is enough proof that the Mirror had got the story illegally. However, Andrew Green representing the Mirror said, and so what? Prince Harry said, well, the timing is suspicious. Andrew Green came back and said, well, so what? One more time. Then Prince Harry said, I'd given an interview. It had been enough to incentivize unlawful activity. We still haven't seen that smoking gun though come from the prince or his barrister. Can they prove the receipts? Can they prove the call logs? And so far we haven't had much, if any, of that. Instead, what Prince Harry is trying to do is depend on his defence that the Mirror has already apologised for one instance of unlawful information gathering and that it couldn't have just happened the once, it must have happened multiple times. Plus the fact that a lot of these stories were deeply sensitive, deeply embarrassing for him to be revealed in the press. First of all, a story about him catching glandular fever or the kissing virus or the kissing disease as it was labelled in court. Now that story he said he hadn't told anybody apart from his closest relatives and yet the Daily Mirror was able to run a front page splash on that. Now not only he said was that bad enough that it was gathered in the way that he's describing but he's saying that other children at his school then did not speak to him, they poked fun of him and that was a recurring theme throughout the day about the damage that's happened to his personal relationships. So it's a case that is rumbling on along those lines at the moment. Here in court, you know, it, it's been quite a day. There are not only the world's press who are here 
to cover this. There is also the public. There's one woman in there who's taken her copy of Prince Harry's autobiography, Spare, and she's asking him to sign it and date it because she believes it'll be worth a pretty penny in the future. This seven-week trial is rumbling on. We've got more revelations to come. Prince Harry is going to be cross-examined yet again tomorrow, and both sides are hoping that the judge will ultimately find in their favour.